Here's the big news. We've got this from Axios. Behind the curtain, top Dems now believe Biden will will exit. This was initially reported that Biden was considering dropping out at some point this weekend. It appears they updated the story to say several top Democrats privately tell us the rising pressure of party congressional leaders and close friends will persuade Biden to decide to drop out of the presidential race as soon as this weekend. I love how they wrote that because they could not put more caveats in this. We are told that rising pressure will will persuade him to drop out as soon as this weekend. But we do have this from OSIN Defender on X. U.S. And this is this is a large account that typically is fair, is very credible. Over a million followers uh, saying U.S. President Joe Biden has reportedly notified campaign officials of his decision to withdraw from the ongoing presidential race with an official announcement coming sometime before Sunday. Despite his withdrawal. It is not believed he will resign the presidency or endorse another candidate like Vice President Kamala Harris. Instead, August Democratic National Convention in Chicago is expected to be the first brokered convention since 1952, with possibly dozens of Democratic candidates vying for the nomination. I think Biden is going to drop out. I said I thought he wasn't going to be the nominee uh, back in November. I think they are just padding their words right now because Instead of coming out with a shock news report, Biden's out. Everybody kind of freaks out, loses their mind. They're giving people a soft landing by first saying Biden may resign. He's being pressured. Then they say uh, more people have come forward. More Democrats have emerged. Then Biden says, well, maybe if I have a condition a couple hours later, Biden says, oh, look, I have covid. Now they release the story. They're trickling it out to get people prepared for the idea that Joe Biden will not be the nominee. What I, I thought think, was, oh, go ahead. No, you go. Oh, what I thought was really interesting was how the report from Mark Halperin this afternoon said that he would not be endorsing Kamala Harris and would be endorsing an open convention. And what's great right. about that is they've been pushing her on us for years now. And it turns out they don't actually even think that she's smartest, to be president. <laughs> smartest thing Biden's ever done. Right. It's, there's not a whole lot in there, but, you know, he got this one. It's one last uh, farewell to the establishment, I think, if Biden is like, well, I'm not going to even endorse this lady you made me take on this ticket. Uh, no, I think, wow. I mean, it is very difficult for me to to believe that Biden uh, is going to resign until I see it, because I think the Biden family is pretty power hungry. I mean, Hunter and Joe Biden this whole time have been like, just stay on the ticket. Don't don't forget about the stairs. Forget about the gaffes. You can do it. I mean, they're really you have to applaud them for how supportive they are of his his desire to stay in the White House forever. Um, but it, the other th- thing that this makes me think of is how much the media would actually love an open convention. I mean, can you imagine the ratings, the ad, the eyes that every large media company would get if you had to watch the Democratic uh, National Convention to see who their nominee is going to be? Oh, this is the, this is the Democrats wet dream mm-hmm. that when Bernie Sanders came in in the grassroots at, with a grassroots effort in 2016, they lost their minds. They had to collude with media to make sure Bernie couldn't win. Then in 2020, Bernie pops his head back up and they have to get all the moderate candidates to drop out and endorse Joe Biden so that he can he can win. And now they're sitting there saying, guys, if we do another convention, RFK Jr. wins. Mm-hmm. So they've effectively shut down the primary process. Joe Biden, I mean, look what they wrote about him in 2020. All we need is your corporeal presence. He was never a real candidate. He was a pariah candidate they could use to undo the policies that Trump had in place that were popular and effective because they want to undo that. They want a totally the the, the policy plans they have for the United States is to give away our manufacturing, open up the borders, engage in war. And they know who they knew whoever they chose is going to lose next time to Donald Trump because he sucks. Whoever whoever was the whoever was the president was going to get elected because of the shadow campaign. Then he was going to rip apart Trump's policies, damage this country, and they'd be screwed. This seems like it's all part of the plan. It is pretty crazy. Do you want to say something? Yeah, well, it seems like it's a lose-lose situation for the Democrats regardless. Like, Trump is going to win in this upcoming election from everything that I've seen. And from all the media reports, you see them posturing in a way of, you know, we told you so with the coverage. Oh, we knew Trump was going to win because then that benefits them in the end. And what better way to get rid of Kamala Harris, who is widely unpopular, than have her take President Trump's position? And then her career is going to be ruined in the future. Somebody else can step in and take over the Democratic Party come 2028. I, I wonder, though, if um, if there aren't a large if there isn't a large swath of the American public that doesn't want to vote for either Biden or Trump and would really welcome another candidate. You know, I certainly have spoken to people who are saying like, I'm not going to vote at all. I can't, I don't like Trump still. I don't like Trump and I definitely can't vote for Biden after the debate. So, you know, a third candidate would pop up and maybe be useful. I think of this episode of Will and Grace actually, where they were trying to vote for someone for city council and Grace was, um, supporting the Jewish female candidate 
and Will was supporting the, you know, white gay candidate. And they get home and they're very upset because they both realize that their candidates are actually incredibly flawed. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen this episode. <laughs> and, and then they get back and Jack says, why didn't you just vote, vote for the black guy? And they both go, there's a black guy running and they rush out to vote. Wow. Was so, it, when was this? This was Will and Grace. Whenever Will and Grace was on. Like was that the 90s or, or something? something like that? Yeah. So I think that there are some people who would run home after realizing that they don't have to, you know, run out to vote and say, oh, there's a somebody totally different running. Let's just vote for that person, regardless of who it is. And there's not going to be enough time to really vet some right. new I, candidate. I think they wait. You know, you're exactly right. There's not enough time. And what I see is evil overplayed its part. And they, um, you know, they even with that debate, their big plan was there. Let's show the world that we to, to get rid of Biden. And, but yep. they thought that Donald Trump would actually have a bad debate and maybe pick on him because he can't think, you know. And it was perfect when he said that thing. When he goes, "I don't even understand what you said." None of us did. I don't think. I he mean, does. That, nobody really did. speaking for the American so was, people. Then, but he was speaking from that. the heart. And and I told our real president, I said, you know. It was such he did such a good job in the debate there. He brought up stuff that, you know, his stuff that had his policies that manifested to December of 2019 when all of our lives had improved. And, uh, you know, no matter where your baseline was, it had improved. And then he brought up things like, you know, I was just in Chicago a month ago. And I had a big event there with Democrats that voted for Biden that were now going to vote for Donald Trump. And I interviewed him and said, why, why, why? And so many of them said, well, it's because, uh, you know, open borders, all the illegals were taking their jobs and all their resources. You know, I, I come from a life of addiction and there are t- even their, their treatment centers were full of people that we're paying for now that are co- in our country illegally. So I think wow. that they I think it opened up a, a lot of people's eyes on the left and on their Democrats that are switching that realize instead of maybe taking someone else because they didn't like either one, now they actually like they're coming into the mega bucket. I I think the play is to have Donald Trump actually win. And I think a lot of uh, bureaucrats, Democrats, and warmongers are already preparing for this in many different ways, not only on the local governmental level, but also when it comes to funding for the war in Ukraine. You see many efforts congressionally, even right now, to try to make sure that the war funding continues under Donald Trump presidency. So I think they gave up. I think they're not really running. Biden wasn't really running in the weeks before this. He's not really running now. And I think the true play that's going to be happening next is the subversion and potentially even the perpetual war that's going to be expanding or financial collapse that would happen under a Donald Trump presidency that would be planned for him and blamed on him specifically. So I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking like they're thinking because you, you, you see them setting up the traps for him already. And I think everyone's expecting this year to be crazy my prediction is 2025 will actually be the craziest year ever and i think that will be the kind of great reset that will be the kind of realization that uh they are really planning for and and that's why i think they're going to let trump kind of have it here and i think biden's going to continue to be the candidate i i he might be the candidate right i I think that's fair we we don't know no i do feel personally that he, he he can't be and but I think there's a good argument that Luke make, Luke's making as to why he may remain even after all of this. And it's that anybody who takes the position after he leaves, their career's done. Yep. You're, you're, you're going to go up. You're going to have a, a, a half-assed campaign a couple months out. You're going to be a joke. You're not going to beat Donald Trump. You're not coming back four years later. So if they try to pull in Newsom now, I can only imagine him saying, are you nuts? I've got a real opportunity in four years. If I go now, it's going to ruin my credibility. It's going to ruin my image. Right. This this report that Biden, if he is thinking about leaving, wouldn't endorse Kamala Harris actually makes me think that Kamala Harris has said, do not recommend me to replace you. I don't want to have to inherit your legacy. I don't want to have to fix your economy. You guys don't like me anyways, and this will make it difficult for me to move forward. Because potentially, if she were to run, she could have eight years in the White House. But she'll always have to defend her time on the Biden ticket. And I think everyone, even Kamala Harris, knows that it's just impossible. Well, she's got to defend the past four years where Mm -hmm. every time she was given a job to do, she said, oh, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do that. And her office was like, what? Border? Who? Where? What? We don't have to do that. We want to go to the abortion clinic. We're doing abortion and BLM and that's it. If Luke's theory lines up it actually makes sense as to why they chose kamala harris yeah biden drops out kamala harris they use her as i don't know just a a mannequin 
placeholder. <laughs> she's not makes sense because Democrats she, are racist. Well, she's never going to win. She's a terrible candidate. She couldn't even get a single delegate. And they're thinking one once Biden is gone. We need someone who can hold that position figuratively or, or you know, just uh, symbolically. But we don't want to waste any of our up and coming talent because it certainly ain't Kamala. So Biden drops out. Kamala is the heir apparent. That's what media is reporting. And she has no career in four years. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a career this time around. Yeah. So it's easy for Democrats to be like she can absorb the damage of the PR failures of this campaign. And then Newsom can come in in four years. Right. So, I mean, Biden did refer to himself as a bridge candidate back back in the day. He he acted as if he was going to be a four year president. So if he always knew that whether it were whether it was because he was making empty promises to the to the DNC saying, I'll step down and let you put someone else in or whether he really wasn't sure he would be allowed to stay in that position. I, I don't know. But I do think that there was always, always a possibility that Biden was not supposed to uh to, to run for a second term. And this really has been his family and, and the staff that's been going with him for the decades that he's been in, in government saying, no, no, we can keep going. Everyone likes us and, and they don't. Thanks for watching this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.